Good day everyone. I'm Sven Benson, a performance sport honor student at the Department of Sports Science at Stellenbosch University. And today I'll welcome you to the first video in the Coach's Corner series titled Core Values versus Purpose. Today the video is going to be divided into three sections. The first part I'll be dissecting core values and purpose. In the second part, I'm going to look specifically at the coaching dartboard. And in the last part, I'm going to be looking specifically at the world's most successful rugby team, the New Zealand All Blacks. The first part of the video will be dissecting core values and purpose. The core values should be intrinsic in nature and they should represent the individuals as well as the team as a collective. Importantly, the core values should also have a specific definition in order for it to have a fulfilling effect. For instance, some teams may state that respect is one of their core values, but they would need to define that. To me, respect represents respect for oneself, one's teammates, the coach, the spectators, but the opposition as well. Teams may also refer to honour as one of their core values. And it's also important to define this because to me, honour is playing with pride for oneself and one's teammates, but most importantly for those that have given me the opportunities to be where I am today. Our core values give us direction. They are the lamp that lights the path for us, but our soul still needs to light the way. Imagine driving in your car and driving 400 kilometers, and a bystander asks you where are you going, and you can't answer that person. Well, that is what life is like for someone that doesn't have uh, core values. Our core values are essentially the piece of the puzzle that helps us climb the ladder of success. Our core values are the foundation for success. Many successful sports teams such as the All Blacks, the Springboks and Liverpool Football Club have core values that are intrinsic to that specific team. The core values help keeping each other accountable, they help set expectations and standards and they also help in building a successful team culture. Purpose is simply, why do you do what you do? Purpose is highly dependent on a person's perception as well as their lived experiences. For instance, a teacher might say their purpose in life is to help serve others and build better citizens for the country. Whereas a doctor might say their purpose in life is to help individuals overcome their pain and ailments. I'd like to tell you a story about an individual that lived a purposeful life by the name of Douglas Bader. Douglas Bader was a World War II veteran, but before the war, he lost both his legs in a plane crash. And just as the war broke out in Britain, the Spitfire airplane had been released. And what was so great about the Spitfire airplane was that it could maneuver so easily in the sky um, but what would happen, some of the pilots would um, black out and they'll crash the airplanes. And the reason why they would black out was because the blood would rush from their brains to their legs. But Douglas Bard didn't have any legs. And he, um, when he entered the, the, the Royal Air Force, he was a massive, he played a massive part in turning around the, the, the war in um, Britain's favour because he believed his purpose in life was to fight and defend his country and was was to fly. That was his, he thought that was his purpose in life, was to, was to fly. So I'd like to ask you, what is your purpose in life? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. In part two of the video, we'll be dissecting the coaching dartboard. I'd like you to imagine what you see on the board here 
as a dartboard with the red circle being the bull's bullseye and the blue circle being the middle ring and the black circle being the outer ring so when we're looking at the red circle it's our why it's looking at our purpose as what i previously spoke about when you're looking at purpose we're looking at why do we do things why do we do what we do for someone in life their calling in life might be to teach another person's calling in life might be to coach other people might feel their calling in life is to help people overcome their sicknesses as a medical practitioner then when we're looking at the how the middle circle when we're looking at the how we're looking at a value driven process on how we're going to get to the end and the how involves maybe us improving our interpersonal communicational skills setting a very good team culture setting um, high standards and expectations then when we're looking at the outer circle the what it's what we want to achieve at the end of the day it's the target to, it's a target goal that we want to that we want to achieve and that could be it has obviously different meanings for everyone depending on their lived experiences and their perceptions but it could be for a teacher it could be their they what in life could be to produce good citizens for the country hard working citizens for the country for a coach it could be to produce winning athletes and good citizens for the country as well for a doctor it could be they want to help people overcome their illnesses and and ailments in the third part of the video series we're going to be looking at the world's most successful rugby team, the New Zealand All Blacks. And I'd like to credit the book uh, Legacy by James Kerr. This is where a lot of the information will come out of. And I'm only going to discuss a few key points that I feel relates a bit to, to my core values. But I'd just like to encourage everyone out there, if you're looking for a very good mentor, some of the best mentors out there in the world are in a library near you, please go look for a book Legacy by James Kerr, you will not regret it. A very, very excellent book. One of the core values the New Zealand All Blacks have is character. And they say it's easy to develop talent, but character is something that you, you cannot develop. They believe that you can have a team full of talented individuals but if they aren't disciplined then you won't reach your goals that you want to achieve but character is one of the key cornerstones to reaching your goals uh, the All Blacks believe in the expression you should sweep the sheds after your games because they believe that um, you should be able to, if you want to do the big things in life you first need to be able to do the small things never be too big to do the small things in life that's the mantra they follow and you'll find after many big test matches you know against the Springboks, against england you'll find them back in the change room coaches management the captain and the players all picking up a broom and cleaning up after themselves within the change room because they believe one of the first things with character is humility Owen Eastwood, who's actually worked with the New Zealand All Blacks, the Proteus cricket team, and the NATO Command, he believes that your performance is defined by your capability and your behaviour. And he believes is um, the way how you behave positively or negatively will influence your capability, which will inevitably influence your, your performance. And he believes this is applicable to everyone from business individuals, to players, to teams. Uh, another thing the All Blacks believe in is they believe in there has to be a balance between pride and humility. They believe that when you run out on the field, you need to play with pride. But before and afterwards, you need to have humility. A very good example of, of humility, I can speak from my personal life, is a very, very good friend of mine. I don't think he minds me mentioning his name, uh, Bjorn Renarsson. 
And when I was in grade 10, he was a, a house prefect and a school prefect at school. And after one of the derby days we had at school, we came to school on a Monday. And generally, we would always, uh, it would always be expected of the grade eights to go and pick up the litter around the field. But he actually went himself and he called the grade eights and he went and he picked up the litter with them. And I think he collected just as much litter as them. And, you know, whenever somebody asks me about life, about how you define leadership, I always tell that story because I don't know, to me, that's, that's, that, that's the definition of leadership is not somebody passing a command down onto another person but by actually helping uplift that person and showing them what's right. Because for me, at the end of the day, there's a big difference between being in a position of leadership and actually holding leadership yourself. The second value that we've been discussing from the New Zealand All Blacks is the value of learn or learning. And the All Blacks believe that you need to create a learning environment, environment where people are going to be open-minded and that they're going to want to take in information. And one of the principles they believe is the principle of marginal gains. So they believe that finding a hundred things that you can improve at by 1%. Obviously in the All Blacks context, it, it would be more things relating to your performance, such as maybe arriving at the gym earlier or doing an extra rep or two in the gym. But in terms of the, the normal person out there, that's maybe a teacher, that's an engineer, a doctor, no matter what profession that you are a part of in the world, it could be finding a hundred things that you can do 1% better at. It could be anything. It could be maybe learning how to communicate with the person a bit better. It could be at home during the lockdown situation, maybe learning how to cook a new meal. It could be... Um, it could be how you um, how you how you conduct yourself in front of people. It could be it could be anything. It could be maybe learning a new handyman skill. Anything. And that is one that's one of the principles that all blacks believe in is marginal gains. It's finding a hundred things that you can do one percent better because that if you look at the end, the bigger picture, take the cumulative effect. It's massive. And another point they're believing is review your performance. One of the, probably one of the greatest all black captains and definitely a, a, I'd like to say a mentor, a mentor to me, even though I've never met him and I'd love to, love to meet him, is uh, Sean Fitzpatrick. And Sean Fitzpatrick runs a motivational company in New Zealand called Front Row Leadership. And one of the things that he advocates strongly is that individuals should, um, review their performance because a lot of sportsmen um, you know they practice more than what they perform and they review both their performance and their practices but how many people no matter what profession they're working in whether you're a doctor or teacher or engineer actually when they work a nine to five job actually go home and they think about their day's performance and it's very very important to review your day's performance i follow a very very simple procedure uh, how I review my day, and that is just before I go to bed, it's about a five-minute procedure, just before you go to bed, write down on a piece of paper, what did you do well today? The second point is, what do you think you need to improve on? And the third point is, how are you going to go about that improvement? I'd like to leave you with a quote for this section, in that the first stage of learning is to remain silent, the second stage of learning is to listen. The third value that the New Zealand All Blacks have is authenticity. And along with authenticity, they believe in that an individual should know thyself, should keep it real. When you wake up in the morning and you stand in front of the mirror and you look at yourself, is be honest about your progress, your performance, also how you reveal performance. They believe um, that with honesty, it provides the greatest vision for yourself. And then when setbacks do occur in life, that you'll be able to overcome them because you already have a strong foundation. They also believe that integrity will help you get the job done in the end. They believe that integrity is this 
central cog or this cog in, in the central leadership that it, it allows everyone to at least know what their roles are and what they what what they have to do and if everyone knows what they what, what they have to do then it will provide clarity certainty it will increase productivity and it will help generate momentum that will give you the results that you want and in essence what what they like to say with authenticity is that when you've got your core values your thoughts your words and your actions aligned much like the stars at night then essentially your word will become your world the fourth core value we're going to be looking at from the all blacks is sacrifice and the all blacks believe that you should find something you would die for and give your life to that's one of the things they believe in and another thing they believe in is champions do extra you know, whether it be that extra sprint, that that extra rep in the gym, you know, the extra five minutes you give to someone in a conversation, um, that little bit of advice you might give to someone in life, that little quote you send them out in the morning, they believe that champions the extra. And uh, the example of a champion in my life would definitely be my parents, my mom and my dad, uh, because whenever they come and they visit me, um, they're able to fill out my fridge. Um, so yeah, I'll definitely say they, they're definitely champions in my life. They really go and do, do actually a little bit more than extra for me. So those are definitely champions in my life. But um, yeah, when we're referring to, um, you know, when people always refer to, you know, going the extra mile, you know, along that road of going along the extra mile, um, you know, it's a, it's a bit of a lonely road. You know, nobody's actually watching you. It's just you, the road, and the task that's ahead. And it's actually there when you're actually by yourself, when you have to graph by yourself. It's actually there where the difference is done, difference is made in contributing towards your, your performance. And that's regardless of um, what profession, whether you're a sportsman or whether you're a businessman or a teacher, it's behind closed doors where the difference is um, between winning and losing in life. And... Um, yeah, I'd just like to tell two stories just of two individuals. One I don't know personally, one I've read about many a times. That's Wayne Buck Shelford. And another one regarding a, a close mentor of mine, Kabama Fuz. But I'll tell you the Wayne Buck Shelford story. So um like I like I've I've mentioned the All Blacks say one of their core values is, is sacrifice. And Wayne Buck Shelford was the captain of the All Blacks in the nineteen eighties and they went on tour to France and I think the game is known as the Battle of Nantes and um, it was a very brutal game, um, very fierce and what happened is um, Buck Shalford actually tore open his scrotum. He sat in the change room at half time and he saw um, something dangling below and all he did was is he told the, the doctor without any anesthetic to stitch me up. He went back on the field. He actually came off, but he came off due to a concussion and losing, I think, two front teeth. Um, but yeah, that's definitely a story of, of sacrifice. Someone that really put their, their life on the line for their team, uh, for their country and for, their, um, and for his family. And another more personal story is re regarding Kabamba Fleurs. So Kabamba Fleurs, he's actually a former Curry Cup winner. He's played for the Springboks, the Springbok Sevens, and he's won two Curry Cups where he was the man of the match in the 2006 final and um, you know I was very fortunate during 2019 to have been mentored by him during my during my coaching experiences and I, I wouldn't forget the day we sat at the, at the spur and Kabamba asked me what am I doing extra and I sort of asked him you know coach what do you what do you mean and he said to me you know I, a lot of the values that I took that I am now as a coach today is what I took from, from my playing days. And he told me when, when he was at the Cheetahs, that was his mindset. If I want to get better than the person next to me. I can't be complacent. I have to be in a growth mindset and I have to do something extra. You have to do that little thing that's going to make you extraordinary. And the perfect example he gave to me was, was he used to arrive earlier practice and warm up before everyone else. And he would be the last person to leave from practice 
having asked questions. But the, the one thing that uh, stuck with me the most was when he, when he also referred to the term sacrifice. So typically what, what, what they'll do at training, if they had a 50 meter sprint, they'll run from the trial line to the 50 meter mark. And then they'll say have a 10 second period to do that with the remaining time as recovery. But what, what would Kabamba do, he would run to the halfway plus to the 10 meter line and back. So he would cover 70 meters in 10 seconds. And that for me was the best example of sacrifice. He would sacrifice his recovery time because he knew that if he did that, he would make himself a better player and he would have a better mindset and he was able to achieve his goals. And I was very fortunate during 2019 to have been, to have been mentored by him. But champions do extra um, to, you know, I, in the, in, sometimes in the world I hear about people that say, oh, but they're just finding something to kill time. Killing time, it's suicide. You know, to tread water, you, you're drowning yourself. Really, you know what your purpose is in the world and you know what you want to accomplish. And set your mind um, on that goal and really just keep pushing and, and, and aiming out there to do better. Thank you guys for tuning in and watching this video. We'd please like to encourage you guys to um, subscribe to the YouTube channel as well as please follow us on Facebook and Instagram. But most importantly, next week we'll be having Joshua Marburg speaking about how to connect values to philosophy. Cheers for now.